Good afternoon, everybody. So it's good to see you again. And today we will continue where we left last time on uh, where we discussed uh, about the external environment of ex uh, electronic businesses. Today's uh, agenda is threefold. I expect to, to cover the rest uh, of the topic that we started last time, and that is the external environment of businesses. And also, we'll talk to you about a uh, trendy phenomenon that uh, is currently happening, and that is a, the new economic uh, model that we experience uh, these days, that is the sharing economy. And lastly, I will talk about the second assignment. So, Last time we we discussed about uh, various legal aspects that you need to take into consideration. Excuse me. Excuse me for a minute. I think my yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we were talking about different legal aspects that you need to consider when you are doing uh, online uh, businesses, and we went as far as aspect number five. So today I will continue with aspect number six, and that is protection of your intellectual property. By intellectual. Uh, Property rights, we mean the rights that protect your designs, ideas, and inventions. It includes content and services developed for e-commerce sites. It's very important uh, to consider intellectual uh, property rights because it affects both ways. It affects your inventions as well as it affects your other people's inventions. You have to know that stealing from uh, other people's intellectual property is illegal. It's, it's uh, an unethical conduct and you can face legal consequences for, for doing so. So it goes both ways. You need to avoid uh, stealing other people's intellectual properties, but also you need to guard yourself against stealing other people. Uh, uh, you also need to protect your intellectual property. And this is because with the internet, it's very easy either for your intellectual property to be stolen by other people or for you to get tempted to steal other people's inventions, ideas, or designs. So you need to know that this is uh, unethical in, if you do so, and you can face uh, legal uh, consequences for that. And this means that you need to think about uh, protecting it, not just making a de declaration or, or on your website that uh, this is my, my property, and if you do the, if you steal it, I will take legal measures uh, uh, on you. But you actually need to go a, a step further ahead to even file a, a patent for your inventions. And this is an example of uh, a company that has patented one of its uh, inventions, and that is. Amazon with their one-click purchasing option. So this is, was their discovery, and it is their discovery. And in 1999, they filed a, a patent, and the United States Patent and Trademark Office issued the patent uh, for it. And it turned out that in the same year, I think it was around October, a company called Barnes & Noble offered the say, a similar option to its uh, consumers and they called it Express Lane, but the function was pretty much the same. And as a result of that, Amazon filed a uh, 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 patent infri infringement uh, 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 suit against this company. 
Of course, uh, the case was eventually uh, settled, but for a given period of time, Barnes & Noble was uh, ordered to stop offering the service. And later on, they tried to get away with it by asking their con consumers to make a second cl click to mm -hmm. complete the transaction. The terms of settlement are not known uh, to today, but finally the, the case was settled. But the case serves to inform you that stealing other people's uh, intellectual property, other people's designs, invention, is illegal and you can face uh, quite high uh, penalties for doing so. And on the other hand, you also need to take measures to protect your uh, inventions. Another aspect that you need to consider when you are involving yourself on, with uh, online business is advertising on internet. And here the most important aspect is to identify and observe all regulations that govern advertising on the internet in the market where you, you operate. Different countries have different regula uh, regulations when it comes to advertising and marketing activities. So for instance, in Norway, they have a, a law that uh, regulates uh, marketing ad ad uh, activities, uh, including advertisements. Uh, it's called Markets for in Sloven. And if you go to this website, yeah, here it is. So this law provides for what uh, businesses are expected to do in the course of conducting their marketing uh, activities. And it covers aspects like terms of uh, uh, transactions that you, uh, you, you need to, to consider, what kind of uh, advertisement, how you should conduct this uh, advertisement. For instance, if you read this law, it's not allowed to uh, randomly find people's uh, mobile numbers and start sending marketing uh, messages or sending e uh, marketing emails uh, randomly, that's not uh, allowed. And they make a lot of provisions of what you can do and not what you cannot do. And I believe uh, for those of you who are coming from other countries, most likely you will also have uh, such laws in your respective countries. So it's very important that to identify which regulations are, uh, apply in your market space and you have to comply by these regulations. So besides the legal aspects of uh, businesses, we also have another aspect that is important for, uh, that is an important aspect uh, in the business environment, and that is environmental and green, green issues related to internet u usage. We all know that environmental sustainability is one of the biggest concerns today in the economic and political discourses in, in many countries. And we are concerned not only about the safety of the, uh, the environment today, but also we are concerned about uh, the sustainability or the safety of the environment for the future generations. So most of the proponents or, or advocates of uh, e-commerce suggest that uh, the internet has a lot of benefits uh, for, for, the, for the environment. And, uh, this is one of the uh, value proposition that uh, uh, e-commerce uh, enterprises may, may use like a, a, as a way of trying to convince people to go online, that the internet and the uh, activities that are conducted online in many ways save to preserve our environment and thereby, uh, thereby promoting the safety of the environment for the current generation as well as the future <coughs> Generation. There are a number of arguments that are made in support of this uh, uh, contention. Uh, one is uh, through uh, online transactions, we, we are able to reduce CO2 em emissions. That uh, by buying online, we reduce, for instance, the distances that we would cover to travel to physical uh, stores. Also, they argue that with the online transactions, it, it, it helps to lower inventory re requirements. Companies are no longer required to locate uh, 
inventories uh, all over the country. They can have uh, one uh, central wa warehouse and save the entire country by conducting their activities online. Also, another argument is fewer printed materials. With e-commerce, a lot of uh, transactional documents that uh, in the past used to be printed out, such as receipts, uh, invoices, orders, and so forth, are today sent electronically. And this reduces the, the amount of printed uh, documents, and it helps uh, to reduce our paper consumption and preserve uh, vegetation, in that case, uh, trees that are used mm. as m raw materials uh, to pap uh, paper production. But also, there is an argument of uh, less packaging, that by making, products such, uh, by making products such as software, music, and video, we reduce uh, uh, amount of uh, materials that could be used for packaging. And this is what they call uh, dematerialization or digitization of, of uh, products. So by, by using uh, less packaging materials, we preserve our activities that uh, uh, lead to extraction of raw materials. And by doing so, we preserve our environment. Another argument is uh, less waste, which is very much connected to the previous argument. And that, but this has to do with uh, the use of second-hand uh, ma materials. Today, when I will talk about uh, the, the sharing economy, we will, we will also look at this in, in, in detail, that through auction services like eBay, Amazon, or Fin.eno, it is possible today for people to pass on the items or products that they, do, they no longer need to other people that will, would find use for, for that. And this reduces waste, because an item that you would otherwise throw away through such me mechanisms that are, are happening uh, with the help of the internet, you can pass on that item to someone else that needs it instead of uh, throwing it away as a waste. Another environmental aspect that we have to, uh, like I think we need to talk about is uh, taxation. Uh, we all know that governments need taxation in order to generate revenue for development activities of, uh, of countries, but also for generating revenue for daily operations of the government. So tax is very important. It's very important we as individuals to, to pay tax to the government for all the services that the government offers to us. But, but also, it's important for businesses as well to pay tax to the government. There are suggestions of people that say, the internet should be a tax-free zone. And uh, after all, it's very difficult for the governments to, to, to control uh, taxation system when it comes to online activities, g given the global nature of online uh, transactions. But still, the governments need this uh, uh, revenue. They still need uh, uh, tax revenue from businesses, including uh, uh, online businesses as an important source of their uh, uh, revenue or income for that matter in running their uh, activities. So the most important uh, thing for a business uh, manager is uh, to understand the tax regulations that uh, apply in your context. Different countries have different uh, regulations. So it's very important that you understand which regulations are important in your country and observe these regulations, because avoiding uh, paying taxes actually is an offense. And you, will, you can face quite here high penalties for doing so. But also, you need to, as, as a strategic manager, you need to respond accordingly to these uh, regulations, the current regulations, as well as the changes that happen to regulations. And one of the strategies for uh, responding to tax regulations is called uh, location optimized commerce on the internet. And that uh, has to do with locating the operations of your business in a, in a region where the tax uh, regulations are f favorable to, to, your, to your business. I'll give you uh, an example of a case that I, I, I briefly talked about it uh, uh, earlier before. but. Uh, I'll talk about it uh, more today. So 
uh, last year when the Norwegian government proposed a new threshold for, for uh, online purchases. This is what the CEO of Stonebeck, for those of you who are not from Norway, Stonebeck is uh, one of the leading Norwegian sports and outdoor uh, apparel retailers. So the CEO said they considered to move 70% of their online sales operations to overseas locations because this new proposal was not favorable to them. And this is an example of uh, location optimized commerce on the internet that if regula tax regulations in a, in a certain market are not favorable to your business, you may consider finding other locations where you may find more favorable uh, locations. But of course, in the end, for those of you who are following the story, this was at the time when the government proposed this threshold to be 500 Norwegian crowns. But later, it was changed. We, we will uh, talk a little bit more about this when we discuss uh, the influence of political factors. Another aspect that uh, you need to consider uh, economic and competitive factors. So economic conditions in any countries play a critical role in determining the uh, potential success of your, uh, your business. And it's very important uh, to, to monitor uh, economic conditions in, in, in a market where uh, you, you operate and craft your business strategy in accordance to the kind of environment you are, you are operating. And this involves uh, both the, the, the macroeconomic factors as well as uh, competition uh, status in the, in the market where you are operating. So it's a very uh, important factor, especially for uh, companies that are operating in, uh, at a multinational uh, level because economic conditions differ from country to country. Norwegian economic conditions are different from, say, uh, French, uh, economic condi French economic conditions, are different from economic conditions in the US, UK, Japan, Thailand, and so on. So it's very important that uh, each time you intend to penetrate a new market, you have to assess the new economic conditions that you are about to, to face. And with respect to uh, electronic businesses, the e kind of economic uh, conditions we, 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 we consider uh, consist of the, uh, of the dynamic interaction system between uh, nation citizens, the businesses in that uh, economy, and the government that are taking advantage of the uh, digital technologies in conducting their activities. So we have a framework for assessing the e-economy. E and that is based on four variables. That is the general environment. The second one is readiness. The third is uptake and use. The fourth is impact. And these variables are evaluated across three important stakeholder groups. And that is the citizens, businesses, and the government. So here is uh, the government, that uh, is the, the framework that for every economy that you are intending to uh, introduce your uh, uh, digital business with respect to the economic environment, these are the factors that uh, you, you have to consider. And those are, uh, to your right, are the key stakeholders that you need to, to, to assess. So the first variable is the general environment. And here we look at uh, the market. Uh, conditions. You look at factors like uh, purchasing power of people I I in that market, their level of uh, IT skills. How likely are they? Li are they how are they likely are they going to use your services? What is their skill level? Cost of access. H how much it costs uh, for, for them uh, to to acquire the infrastructure uh, and other facilities that are necessary for using your services and so on. But also you need to consider the political environment as we have, uh, we will talk a, a little bit more about this uh, uh, later and you have to think about uh, factors such as uh, democracy, political uh, movement, political uh, stability in general and all these factors 
determine how successful your business uh, might, might be. There are countries that have been war in war almost throughout the time. So probably uh, such uh, locations may not be very at attractive for the kind of business you are trying to uh, think about. But also there are countries that are experiencing frequent uh, instabilities that uh, the governments are thrown over from time to time there is no peace and so on. So you need to assess the uh, political environment in general of the market that you, you intend to, to penetrate. But also, you need to think about uh, the infrastructure. That in order to conduct uh, electronic business, you need to, uh, some level of uh, in infrastructure development is required. So you need to, to assess whether the markets that you are intending to, to, to penetrate has the required uh, uh, infrastructure or facilities that are necessary for your business uh, to, to, to operate. Besides the general environment, you, ha you have to consider readiness. And this is readiness of the citizens, the businesses that are operating in that market, as well as the, the government. That, and with readiness, you, you, you look at uh, factors such as um, the, the willingness to, to, to adapt uh, the technology or the services that you are trying to, to offer. And this applies to, to all three uh, stakeholder groups, uh, to the citizens, to businesses, and governments um, as well. But also, you need to consider uptake and use. Uh, the, how willing or how likely are people to use uh, the, the services, the technology uh, that your business uh, introduces to, to the market. And likewise, this also applies to all stakeholder groups. And the last uh, factor is the, the, the impacts. You, all these factors may, may have uh, uh, quite impressive scores, but uh, it, it depends on the significance uh, 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 of the, uh, the electronic uh, markets or the digital uh, economy in the market where you are uh, operating. In some countries, the, the impact of uh, di digital uh, technologies is quite high. But in some countries, you have uh, consumers, but they are not enough to, to allow you even to break, break, through, uh, to break even for, for your business. So this, uh, when it comes to impact, this uh, determines uh, the, 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 the level of uh, revenue that your business uh, may earn in a particular market. Uh, so basically, you, you, you assess the impact of digital technology in a given uh, market across all three uh, stakeholders. So it's very important that uh, to, to assess the e economic uh, uh, conditions or factors, as I've said, because different countries have different economic uh, conditions. And this means that it may detect different uh, o operational strategies uh, for the individual uh, market is that you are operating. So for instance, uh, in some countries like China, consumers or users are not allowed to access certain uh, content or certain kind of businesses are not allowed to, to, to operate in, in that particular uh, market. So you need to consider such factors. But uh, when it comes to uh, observing the economic conditions in different markets, managers can also study e-commerce in the leading countries to help predict uh, future e-commerce trends in their own countries. So we know that different countries have different levels of development when it comes to uh, digital technology. So countries like uh, US are in the forefront, uh, countries like uh, Norway are uh, leading in terms of uh, internet penetration. We, we have so much to learn from other countries. So it's very important for you as, as a manager to follow new trends, to follow what is happening in other countries, because that can say something about what is likely to happen, not in the so distant future in your country. Uh, t today, when I, uh, I talk about uh, uh, the sharing economy, we will have uh, a, a couple of examples mainly from the United States, like what is happening right now. Of course, most of those uh, uh, practices and trends have already penetrated to countries like uh, Norway. But generally, 
the main point is we always have to keep our eyes open and see what is happening in, in other countries. And that could be an important source of uh, business ideas. As I said uh, last time when uh, we talked about uh, innovation, it's not necessarily that you, you come up with an idea that has never existed before. But sometimes innovation could be in form of introducing an idea that was not, uh, did not exist in, in the market where you are, you, are, you, are, you are operating. So, and one of the ways of doing so is by keeping track of what is happening in other countries. So connected to the economic uh, and competitive factors is uh, an aspect of uh, globalization. And by globalization, we mean the international uh, integration in, in, in arising from um, f factors uh, such as interchange of uh, worldviews, uh, products, ideas, and, and so forth. And this is very much uh, characterized by blurring of social and cultural differences. So with globalization, we, we ex experience that individual markets across uh, the world are converging into a single global uh, market. And geographical boundaries are becoming irrelevant. So with the help of internet today, you can run a company in Norway and have your em employees, say, in India or in the United States. You can have your operations in China and sell your products in Norway. And vice versa is true. So the internet has, in many ways, uh, contributed to integration of the global community of global markets. And this makes, very, uh, makes it very easy for companies to penetrate international uh, markets. In the past, it was most, most likely for large uh, corporations to, 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 where they had a, a higher chance of uh, extending their operations to international market, markets. But today, with the help of uh, internet, even uh, a quite new company can start internationalizing their operations right away as soon uh, after uh, the, the kickoff of the uh, operation, uh, operations. We, we call them uh, bond globals, that uh, you start uh, saving international markets as, as soon as your operations have uh, taken off. And this has, made, has been made easy by, uh, with the help of uh, the, the internet. But Coach and McLean uh, suggested that if you are planning to internationalize your operations, your, your, your business online, then you need to consider a couple of things that are obvious uh, consequences or outcomes of uh, ex uh, saving the, the global marketplace. The first one is uh, you need to be prepared for 20-hour order taking and customer service response capability. We know that uh, these global markets are located in different uh, geographical regions with different time zones. So y you need to be prepared for 24-hour order taking and customer service and re uh, customer uh, response capability. Another factor that you need to consider when you consider uh, when you are expanding your business to international uh, markets is understanding of regulatory and customs handling uh, uh, dynamics. Because as I said uh, uh, in a couple of uh, minutes ago, that different uh, regions have different regulatory frameworks. So whenever you expand your operations to international uh, markets, you need to consider uh, the new uh, regulations that uh, apply in the respective markets that you are expanding into. And also, the third factor is in-depth understanding of foreign market environments to assess the advantages of its own products and services. Now, different countries have different cultures, and that determine different uh, preferences and different needs. So it's very important uh, to recognize that the products that uh, appeal to Norwegians may not necessarily ap appeal to uh, French or to Americans or to people in other countries. It is very important that you make assessment of needs and preferences 
of your uh, potential customers in those respective markets that you are, your business is going to, to save. And related to this is the consideration of language and cultural understanding. We know that different countries may have different uh, uh, languages and different uh, ways of uh, living, that is uh, cultural uh, aspects. So it's very important that uh, you, you consider these aspects because they may have a significant bearing on your, your, your business. I'll show you uh, some examples uh, from the, uh, when we discuss about localization. So as companies are expanding into different markets across the, 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 the globe, it's very important to think about uh, localization. And local, what it means by localization is tailoring of e-commerce services for individual countries or regions. We have said that different countries have different uh, conditions. So it's very important that you mm -hmm. consider tailoring your, your services to meet the needs and preferences of uh, customers in those respective countries. And this is what we call localization. So uh, websites may, may need support, uh, may need to support customers from a range of countries with different product needs, language differences, other cultural differences. And it's very important for, uh, to, to save buyers in global markets with localized products and, with, and services. So it, is, it may be necessary to vary your, your, your website or your online business with needs such as uh, language of the, of the customers that you are going to save, site de design, research indicates that people uh, in different cultural have uh, different perceptions or different preferences for uh, things like uh, design, colors, images. So a website that may be appealing to Norwegians may not necessarily appeal to people of uh, other cultural backgrounds. So uh, likewise, the range of product offerings, pricing in different countries, people have different purchasing power. So it may be necessary to vary uh, the pricing strategy of, of your uh, services depending on which market you are, you are operating. But also, it may be necessary to uh, consider type of uh, promotion activities yeah, you, you are uh, considering. I remember I, I know a, a person that uh, had done an uh, experiment with the role of uh, sexual appeal in advertisement. And he compared uh, subjects from Norway and others from one of the Asian countries. And the results were quite different. In Asian countries, sexual appeal is not that acceptable when it comes to advertisement. But uh, in Western countries, the use of sexual appeal in advertisements is quite common. So as you expand into foreign markets, you need to consider what kind of promotion activities that you are going to, uh, to use and whether such activities or such appeals will be acceptable or not, considering the uh, cultural context of the market where you are operating. So here is uh, uh, a framework uh, that uh, shows the, uh, the level of uh, localization. And it, it ranges from zero localization. And that is a, a standardized website where you design w one website. And you save all customers with the same website. So it's what we call one size fits all. So you assume that uh, the same website will be suitable to all your customers, regardless of their uh, cultural uh, backgrounds. But another uh, uh, type of localization is uh, semi-localized uh, web websites, where a single site saves all customers. However, there will be contact information about foreign subsidiaries available for international customers. So with this type of localiz localization, you recognize the, the fact that uh, customers in individual uh, in different countries may have different needs. So in addition to the standard uh, website you have, you provide um, contact uh, persons uh, in those respective countries where customers may 
consults uh, in case of uh, certain uh, issues that are applicable to their uh, context. But another type is localized websites, where this is a country-specific website with language translation for international customers when it's relevant. So in this case, you develop uh, a website where the main language says Norwegian, but also you provide option for other languages. And in, in most cases, you know, it's the, the lingua franca of uh, trade these days is English, so most likely you will have uh, English translation for your website. So you have an, a, a website that serves uh, customers in a specific country, but also you provide options for uh, customers in other markets who use different languages, for instance, to also be able to access your website. And also you have uh, highly localized websites. So these are country-specific websites with language translation and other localization uh, efforts in such as time, date, postcode, current, formats, etc. So this is a much more serious recognition of needs of customers in individual, in individual markets, where you provide not only the uh, language translation, but also you provide other aspects. For instance, um, you, you use uh, local currents for, for transactions, and also you try to match uh, the time and other aspects that are, would make it more convenient to customers in those uh, markets. And the last one is cultural uh, customized websites. Uh, these are websites that uh, reflect complete immersion in the culture of target customer segments. So with these websites, everything becomes customized according to the cultural context where you are, you are operating. And that's uh, one, uh, an example uh, of a website or a company whose websites are very much uh, cultural uh, image. So if you go to uh, Jurex's uh, website, they will give you options for, for the different countries where they, they operate. And when you, you go to the uh, websites of individual uh, countries, they have a completely different uh, content and different uh, approaches. So Jurex uh, in Africa is completely different from Jurex uh, in, in Europe and other countries in terms of their website and the approach. And this is what we call cultural customized website. And in fact, even in Europe, what they have for uh, Norway or UK is completely different from what they have for Italy. So they try to consider the cultural context of individual countries. Of course, localization is uh, very important in, in, in many ways because it helps to increase confidence of uh, customers in the local market. It, it, it makes uh, people feel more convenient to, transa to transact you with your business. It makes them feel at home because uh, they, are ac they are accessing something that has uh, their uh, cultural, uh, cultural feel of their own. And this is uh, an example. Uh, it's a quote from the CEO of uh, MySpace. This is from 2008. And they say, all the 27 a sites are localized. We don't believe that one size fits all. We know that from the first day we localize in any language, we triple our signups on original users. So this is an example of uh, appreciation of localization uh, strategy. Also, sites which have local language uh, versions will be listed more prominently within the search engine results pages for local versions of the search engines. We, we know that in most cases in, 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 ma in many countries, people would like to search things in their own language. Of course, in some cases, as I said, English is increasingly becoming a, 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 a lingua franca of trade. That is a, a universal language for business. People may also search uh, in English, but uh, it is very common for people to search uh, brands, uh, products, services using their local language, which means if you localize your, your website using a local language, you will have a higher chance of making your uh, websites uh, prominent when it comes to organic search results. We, we talked earlier about uh, search engine optimization. That is uh, the, the natural or organic uh, search results that uh, uh, come up when uh, users uh, 
use uh, search terms on search engines. So uh, with the use of local language, you increase the, the possibility of your website to be visible to your potential uh, customers. However, we cannot be naive of the fact that localizing a website could be quite expensive. Following a strategy like Durex, where you offer each individual country uh, <coughs> according to their specific uh, needs, can be quite expensive to a small and medium uh, size enterprise. So it's a, uh, you need to do a sort of uh, cost benefit analysis, like comparing the potential benefits of uh, uh, localizing versus the potential costs that you, 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 you are likely to incur uh, in the course of uh, localization strategy. Political factors. Uh, this is another uh, aspect that we need to consider when we do business, and that is because uh, politics play a crucial role I in uh, our, our, our lives, and not only to individuals, but also to, to, to businesses. So politics uh, play a decisive role uh, when it comes to uh, success of uh, business, or when it comes to business uh, uh, environment, uh, for that matter. Uh, and when it comes to, uh, to politics, there are various stakeholders that uh, have a, a, a role to play. And we say the political environment is shaped by the interplay of government agencies, public opinion, consumer pressure groups, and industry-backed organizations. So we know that it's uh, through politics most of the uh, regulations, uh, policies are uh, uh, introduced is the parliament that is responsible for making laws in the country, laws that may also affect uh, uh, businesses. So it's very important to always uh, observe uh, the political environment uh, in a country. And some of the aspects that might be influenced by uh, po political uh, action could be promotion of, uh, say, the use of uh, technologies such as internet. We all know that, uh, amazingly, politicians have a very power. Well, they, they are very powerful when it comes to influencing things. So through political act, uh, actions, we, those kind of uh, aspects, could, uh, the use of uh, certain technology could be either promoted or discouraged. But so we know that it's through political processes that uh, uh, legislations ca come into existence. We know that. Uh, through political processes that uh, guidelines for business conduct are provided. We also know that uh, through political processes, or international bodies uh, for coordinating internet and other uh, technology uh, applications are set up. So speaking about uh, political uh, uh, influence, this is an example uh, that I said I will talk about later. when. Uh, the, the Norwegian government pro proposed uh, a new threshold for the uh, taxes on online pu purchases. Initially, as I said, the proposal was uh, the, the threshold would be 500 uh, Norwegian uh, crowns. But uh, as we say, you have uh, an interplay of various players, uh, such as uh, industry-backed uh, organizations, consumer pressure, public opinion, in this case, uh, political parties, that have an influence when it comes to such proposals or uh, laws. So th th this is uh, an, an excerpt from a, a newspaper where uh, a representative in NH Ho, this is a trade uh, organization in, in Norway that is quite powerful. And they, they, they criticized this uh, original proposal from the government. And here they were show, showing a representative from this organization trying to bring up their alternative uh, proposal. And this is uh, an excerpt from another newspaper uh, saying that uh, this is a, a political party that opposed this uh, uh, proposal. It's, uh, it was two political parties, uh, Venstre and uh, Korev. They are small political parties but uh, have a very decisive power in the, in, in the parliament. So this is a, uh, these are examples of uh, political factors that can shape 
the business environment in which we are operating. And the last factor is technological factors, and we will discuss this after the break before uh, I introduce the sharing economy, and I talk a little bit about uh, the second assignment. So I'll see you in 15 minutes. <laughs>